Today we're going to be talking about our own personal origin stories and not how we turned into superheroes, but how we got into comic books. You know, what, it's been a lifelong thing. I'm pretty much, you know, the, from the, the earliest memories till now, I'm still reading the things. You know, how did you guys pick them up in the first place? So, start first. I want to hear uh, JB's yeah. origin story. Oh, man. Uh, I can I can read at a very young age. I mean, I, I went in kindergarten, I can already read. Back then, my parents were buying me comic books. Casper, Hot Stuff, The Little Devil, Wendy, uh, Richie Rich, yes, uh, Archie. Archie Digest, and of course, the famous reprints of Carl Barks Disney. So good. Some of the best stuff. I, and I read that for years. I got a little bit older and a little bit tired of the baby stuff, so I started reading like Sergeant Rock and war comics. God damn, you went straight Western, to the war. <laughs> and uh, horror. I love House of Secrets, House of Mystery, which reprinted. And give us a circuit, like, what, 82? Oh, man. That, no, like, we were talking no, about... Yeah, 80, probably 80. Like 78. The, <laughs> like seven, late 70s was uh, kid stuff. And then in the early 80s, that's when I started reading Westerns and war comics, horror comics. Uh, in the great, so you so you do me like 82, 83, you start yeah, reading, yeah, so still okay. reading. So you got to talk to me like 87, 88. No, I was talking about it. Wasn't movie. until I got to junior high, no, I never like read 70, 70. I never read superhero comics, but rarely I didn't like them because you only got a piece of story if you didn't have the previous issue, you had no idea what was going on, and if you didn't have the next issue, you never found out what happened. Mm-hmm. So I would never read superhero comics, and it wasn't until junior high. I saw A.M., didn't even know him. Mm-hmm. He was at his locker flipping through an issue of Secret Wars. And I went over and asked what that comic was. And I, I'd seen so many different superheroes. He showed it to me, and I started collecting the Secret Wars. And that's when I really started collecting comics. That's when I got into superhero comics. That's a good it turned out A.M. lived not even a block away from me. And I went over and checked out his comic collection. He looked at my trash collection. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had them now. Now the Western oh, yeah. comics are no joke. Neither are the war comics. That's funny. The old horror. They're, they're up there in value now, but they were heavily read. So yeah. AM lived down the street from you, and you guys had the same birthday or a day apart? Day apart. Yeah. So. We, uh, Our best was, friends. Was, <laughs> did we just become did best friends? Did we just become best friends? I think we did. Hey, we, we hung out. We still hang out today, and that's all the way back from junior high. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, I, I think I know what yeah. Frank's is, but uh, what what is it? <laughs> I think I do. Yeah, I think I know. I, I, I it's start it's with very your similar, dad. like to uh, to what JB said. First of all, back then when we were kids, when we were kids in the old days, <laughs> comics were available everywhere. Man, yes. it wasn't like like it is now, where you have to go to a special place to pick them up. Yeah. You know, you everywhere you went, they were there, and you could just, you know, at the grocery store, you'd get the Archie Digest, or you'd get the, the hot stuff at 7-Eleven and all that kind of stuff. But even before that, you know, I also was reading when I was way too young to be reading. So uh, one of the first things that I saw was my dad sorting through his comic collection. You know, and I, I might have been two or three, and just a little kid. And, uh, of course, uh, what's all this? This is fascinating. I've seen, like, Spider-Man cartoons and stuff, but whatever. So uh, I start looking through his books with him, and he starts giving me two a day to look at. And, uh, the very first two I remember, cause they, they burned into my head. I have them actually sitting right here. And they're kind of interesting when you look back at what these really are. So uh, this was an old Action Comics. This is actually the first appearance of the Parasite. It's, wow. uh, it's not in the greatest condition because I was reading it when I was three. <laughs> but, uh, it's, I must have read that book about a thousand times as a kid. And, uh, and this other one that I remember reading with it, which is an old Superboy with the very first appearance of Bizarro. Oh, wow. So, Holy mackerel. So, uh, All right, a question. So, uh, as, a, as a three-year-old child in 1977, my dad felt comfortable giving me these to read back, you know, as much as I wanted See, to look at them. Th- that's uh, what I was going to say. Like, well, well, he, have a legit he didn't care about the value. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it, it was just a... Because uh, the, the follow-up, too, was uh, the first Silver Age Penguin. And this uh, Justice League number 18. <laughs> so they're out here, you know, read them. 
And uh, once I started reading those, it was it was over. I said, okay, well now I want everywhere we go or every time somebody leaves the house, can you bring me some comics? Can you bring you know? So it was, uh, it, you know, it turned into, you know, Spider Man from the Seven Elevens, which uh, my dad was a DC guy. He got kind of like, don't buy Spider Man and the Hulk, you know, don't buy that stupid Archie, buy Superman or Batman. Huh? Uh, you know, like, so by the time I was five and started school, I had a drawer full of comics. You know, mm. not uh, not like we have now, where you have boxes upon boxes. But that drawer of maybe a hundred books was, you know, every day, every time. You know, I'm gonna eat dinner reading comics. I'm gonna sit in front of the TV reading comics. It became like a, you know, obsession yeah. basically. I uh, plus we had underoos, dude. Spider Man oh, pajamas, yeah. Batman yeah, pajamas, man. all that shit. I had so you can I, uh, run around the house being Superman and then read his book. <laughs> <laughs> I got kicked out of Catholic school for saying that Superman was more powerful than Jesus. I've told that story <laughs> on this show before. That may be true. Now that's obsession. <laughs> I said, does Jesus have heat vision? No. Does he have supervision? No. Does he have wind breath? No. Can he what does he do? <laughs> time backwards. It doesn't say he can. And I was I was six, and to me, I was very reasonable. But uh, they they did not like that whatsoever. Because of course, it was in the class in front of. Plus, Superman people. has a cooler costume. Come there on, you go. Man, you know, man, Superman sure. Superman was not vulnerable to anything. Come on. Sure. And they're both. Now I think I think they would not <laughs> battle myself. I think personally, they would team up if they ever actually met. And they probably did somewhere in like a DC Comics presents Christmas or something. <laughs> right. Superman meets the son of God. I guess I, the son he, of Dor El meets. I think there'd been a chance he met up with Santa Claus. I don't know if they'd go with. The no, they definitely did Santa Claus. Definitely, I, I remember that one. It sounded that way was, dirtier uh, than you meant it, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say uh, to piggyback a slightly off of, of your story, mine probably started on Saturday morning cartoons as well, being kind of familiar with Spider-Man and his amazing friends and the Super Friends and stuff like that as a kid, and going to the grocery store with my mom. The two aisles that I would always hang out is the toy aisle, like when you go to the grocery store and it was actual toy aisle. Oh yeah. Because my mom. Not only did my mom go up and down every aisle when she shopped, which was a nightmare for me as a child, because it felt she like it took forever. She had a list. She would <laughs> always run into somebody and oh. get to talking. And if you knew my mom back in the day, Robbie, I know you were well aware. Yes. When she got to talking, that pretty much was a wrap for the for the grocery experience. So I would go over by the magazine aisle, and whatever comic book was available because I didn't read magazines but whatever comic book they happened to have out and they never always had like a great selection it was, Mad Magazine. well I wasn't reading Mad Magazine I was a kid I wasn't into that I oh. I wanted like it was like Casper or when, was it Wendy who yeah, was it Wendy the uh, hot stuff the little the rich hot yeah. stuff the little devil Richie Rich Richie Rich, Richie Rich, those were the ones that were there. Yeah, they caught. They always catch a little. Catch your eye. So those are. I kind of thumbed through, and then when we go to like Seven Eleven, they had more uh, the superhero uh, comic books over there. I want to say my my actual introduction to comic books, the actual first comic book I bought for like seventy five cents. I want to say it was an Iron Man book, and this was during. You would probably know better. This was during the years of. Uh, Iron Man when he was like an alcoholic. Oh yeah. So what was that? Like early 80, 80, 80, 80 to 85 ish. Yeah, 80 to 85. Because that's what my introduction. I was like, oh my god! I was like, <laughs> should I be reading this? I was probably nine, maybe. So I was like older than you guys. So I was like nine, maybe, maybe ten, when I started reading these books. And I, I went from the jump from Iron Man to Captain America, and then from Captain America, I was introduced to the X-Men. And I was an X-Men guy from that point on. Like When it oh, came yeah. to my collecting, it was every X-Title, whatever X-Title came out, I was reading it, I was loving it. Yeah. And the one thing that you had a problem with with comics was the thing that I adored the most. Like, I, the search to find out how does this story begin? Where did it go? Like, I need the chronological order. So that's when I got introduced to back issues and stuff. Because I know nothing about a back issue. And 
until Ralphie. And this is like 85 at this point, 86. So I didn't even know. Comics and comics, baby. I didn't know that there was even, that was a possibility. You mean I'm on issue 238? I can find 200? <laughs> yeah, you get the back issue. I just thought they came out that if you missed it, you missed it. <laughs> no idea. And I have also shared this story before uh, when Ralphie introduced me to the Power Pack. He gave me like a, like, it was like a whole. Yeah, it was probably one through 50. Yeah. Read them all. Ate them up. Yeah. I tell you what about that. Uh, part of my collection, the off comic, there were a couple superhero comics in there. One of them was a Captain America issue, which I found recently again and bought it. Just sentimental value, like Frank. The other one was Brave and the Bold with Batman and Superman. And Superman screws over Batman, takes him back in time, frames him for being a witch in Salem. <laughs> and then yes. so he's about to get hung, and that's the end of the story. Mm. And that drove me insane. Yeah. It's like, why is he doing this? <laughs> What's going to happen to Batman? How's he going to get back in the future? How's he going to get out of this? <laughs> Still don't know to this day. <laughs> what happened? I wonder if I never traced this. down the... Ba- that's why. It wasn't... It, yeah. it was actually... That's why. Well. He made it out. I'm sure he made it out all right. And I'm sure Superman had his reasons. <laughs> but uh, AM is the one who said, man, you got to stick with the storyline and read it. And he was always into the art. And I really, right. really never noticed the art until AM... Oh, really right. pointed it out, and you had Mike Zek doing Secret Wars. And mm-hmm. like, wow, that's like the, the, one of the best artists of his time. Sure. And uh, I got into the art, got into the story. That's when I started collecting and looking for back issues. That wasn't until junior high. Yeah, I, I would have to say that. And the letterer. Because I, I, the artwork is what influenced me. It, and know? that's how I started. I started basically copying. I was tracing and I was, in essence, because I liked the character so much, and I didn't have... Another thing, being broke, you didn't have all of the stuff that you wanted. So you would trace things, and oh, you would yeah. trace one from this book, and then slide your paper over and trace another guy from another book, so you can get different characters on one page. One page yeah. So I would trace and trace and trace, destroying my comic books, by the way, <laughs> as I was doing this, because I didn't know any better. But what I was, in essence, doing, I was teaching myself how to draw. Because I went from tracing, then I can be like, all right, well, I can. I don't have to put it right on top of it. I can, like, lean it over to the side, and I can look yeah, at it, copy it and copy it. Yeah. And I went from that to, all right, well, now I just need to go back just to see a, a position. Like, I can't get this position right. Oh, yeah. So let me see the position, and I can fill in everything else. Next thing you knew... I, I was drawing. <laughs> I, I could do this without. I could do it without it. Yeah. That, that one of my first, uh, well, one of my favorite drawings I did was the one where uh, Spider Man's holding Wolverine's uh, bloody yeah, body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always, you always hated that. <laughs> always had a you inked it for me, though. <laughs> I always had a problem with that. <laughs> uh, well, my introduction to comic books was my older brother hated me. And I say that because when I was uh, a digital, maybe like three or four, he said I would always rip his comics up. He had a collection when he was a kid. He's seven years older than me. And uh, when he would let me look at him, oops, I ripped it. I'm sorry. (laughs) Every time. Um, Years and years later, when he uh, started letting me read his comics again, he really taught me how to hold a comic book (laughs) in one hand, flip it other hand and then just be still with it sit don't want run around the house with the comics and don't ball it up and shit just yeah. hold it read yeah. it don't I roll it up and stick it in your pocket I it doesn't not. go in the I would wrap the it up and, and, jam yeah, it in the back comic pocket. book roller man roll, roll it up but, hey because you're somewhere waiting I got my book read it <laughs> when I'm done with it because when I was done with a book I was done with it yeah Really? Uh, so then I learned, uh, okay, um, where do we get these comic books? Well, the library has comic books that you can uh, 
borrow check forever. out. <laughs> you can borrow forever, yes. I yeah. actually did borrow uh, Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man 249. It's so funny. I didn't know Never. that. Me and Ralph would walk to the library. It's like, where are we going? He goes, hey, we're going to the library. I'm like, why aren't we going to the library? He said, so we could check out comic books. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you can get a yeah. book, a comic book at the library? He goes, yeah, man, that's where you can go to the library to get books. I was like, comic books? <laughs> yeah, comic books. Let's go. Let me show you how to get a library card. Yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> real. I didn't have one. One thing your brother didn't teach you is bags and boards. Is that's that guy, is true. I met you. I don't remember when <laughs> yeah. it was, but I remember it was about comics, and I walked home to see your comic collection. Yeah. All your bags were pure gray, spongy. Yeah. And fall out. I was like, oh no, you're yeah. gonna ruin them. And I, I, thought, I thought they were good because they were in bags. And this was, yeah. That was like 1986. Something 80, like that, yeah. 87? Maybe 87. And I was like, no, you gotta rebag all these. Yeah. And uh, oh, wait, this God. board is backwards? Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> you got this beautiful Spider Man collection. So look how faded they're getting. Those, yeah. those plastic bags are destroying them. Yeah, then I learned what Man. Uh, acid was. Yeah, bags. <laughs> You know it was Whoa, a big and then the books were way yeah. cooler, man. Oh wait, wrong acid, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you got to change my, those bags when they get cloudy, you know, because yeah. they'll, they'll destroy the comic. It'll fade it. Yeah, it take first, yeah. it takes at, the at least, least they were there, the though. I mean, like I say, so my dad had his in a, in a brown, in two separate brown paper shopping bags that were then put in the attic. There was no bags or boards. It's like, wow, it's a good thing the attic didn't get super hot or cold, or whatever. Yeah. So they're still pretty good shape, but. You know, I bagged them all in like what '89 or something like that. So it's uh, they had a good 13, 14 years of just being in a paper bag, mm-hmm. stacked, and you know they didn't they didn't get too rolled or anything. It was pretty good. Of course, he had like a bunch of Playboys on top of him. He didn't give me those, <laughs> which is, which is <laughs> fine. Playboys. Which is fine. Nobody right wants to use uh, Playboys. Slightly off off topic, but since you guys were more collectors than I ever were, than I ever was, did you ever get into the Mylar? Did you ever go for those? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Were they just more expensive? Yeah, it's more expensive. Yeah. Expensive yeah. But to, it's, it's sure. better stuff, too. Yeah. It's a better preservative. I have Mylar's on a lot of records, but I only have it on a few comics, some of the more expensive ones. Yeah, same here. I have this one comic most expensive Mylar. Comics. And yeah, because I know they had the Mylar's, and then when we started going to um, conventions, this was the first time I noticed they, I don't know, sealed in a plastic vault with those books. <laughs> yeah. Like, are those screwed in? <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is that like, about? This is serious business is what it oh, is. Oh, man, it, 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 you don't see the same uh, comics there anymore. It's like, I, one of the early conventions I went to, this guy had a wall on almost every issue was Amazing Fantasy 15. He must have had 12 yeah. copies of it. I'm like, ah, if I could just get one of those, oh. you know? <laughs> This guy's got 12 on life. is so unfair. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, man. I, I had no idea that getting one from like $1,500 back when we were kids would have paid off now. Man. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oh. If you look at some of those, like I had like a, I don't know what it was, but something from 1980 I was looking at. And, you know, they always have the Mile High Comics ad in there somewhere with like all the stuff that they're selling at whatever prices. And it's like, you know, all of those X Men issues that are expensive now were like a dollar or less a piece, sixty cents, forty cents. Mm-hmm. You know, Daredevil from like two to fifty was like forty five cents. You're like, wow, just all these prices. You know, Fantastic Four number one was like nine hundred bucks. You know, Ugh. and I mean, that was really that was a lot of money back in nineteen eighty. But you know, yeah. uh, it definitely yeah, would have uh, it, it made money. Qu- it went up quicker than anything else you could have probably bought. That's one of the two things that I did like doing that was off the beaten path, but still on the path of comics, is reading up on the uh, value of comics, and also, uh, I, I used to love reading letters in the back of the book. Well, I, I, I hand soapbox. I knew that some comics were valuable, because of course you go to the comic store and see them on the wall, but it wasn't, it was in junior high again, my aunt gave me a price guide for Star Wars and Star Trek collectibles. And okay. for my birthday, and it's because my mother would never let me trade or throw away any toys, and all I had was Star Wars. That's what I grew up with. Mm-hmm. And I found out that some of this stuff is worth a lot of money, and we boxed it all up and took it to a sci-fi convention. Mm-hmm. Some dude drove from San Jose all the way to a house in Fairfield to buy this stuff. 
Wow. And I would take backpacks. That's like that. pre-internet. Like. Well, these were those 12-inch dolls they released at Empire Strikes Back. And no my memory. mother looked What's around that? and tried to find every one of them. But I, we oh, ended cool. up getting like six or eight of them. And he drove all the way from San Jose because two of the ones, one for me, one for my brother, two of the ones were IG-88, the rarest mm. in the lot. Yeah. This dude drove all that way just to get IG-88, but he bought the whole collection. And it's like, then I was like, wow, it's like, this is, this is do they make these for comic books? It was an overstreet. And like, of course they do. Yeah. And, I, and then I started getting into the value, and it's like, wow. And that's where I saw the valuable comics, the ads for the overstreet. I would look at for hours, first appearance of the Flash, the Golden Age, you know, first appearance of the Golden Age, Green Lantern, you know, and really cool stuff. It's pictures. funny that you even at that time would even zero in on focus on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, for me, I would go back to, like I said, the, the art always drove my interest, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, first and foremost, I was into the X-Men, so you're talking about artists like, uh, you know, Art Adams, uh, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, you know, these are the guys that did the runs that I was like. John Byrne. Uh, John, John Byrne. 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 Sure. No, John Byrne. <laughs> so I was a huge John Byrne fan. Yeah, I, I mean, I had, I told you, I had that John Byrne Superman. She-Hulk on my wall for way longer than I did. You, did you ever read it? I got it because I liked it, and then I got it, I had it because I liked it. <laughs> did, did you ever read his Fantastic Four run? No, a lot of I people didn't read that. Oh, it's so guess. good. I'm gonna yes. tell you, there was a lot of stuff. I, I became, I, I was like a, I was like a mutant purist. It was like. Oh. No, I, I guess because <laughs> you know because the the, the, the the undertones of the X-Men was always about race mm-hmm. out, out of everything else you know you say mutants but they always say you know Charles Xavier and Magneto was always Martin Luther King and Malcolm X that's how I took it growing up and there wasn't a lot of books that just had black heroes in it I mean, they they were there, but they weren't there. There weren't a lot of them, you know. <laughs> you ever read uh, "God Loves Man Kills," where it was very explicitly pointing out the fact what you're talking about there? You know, it's like that's this is this is the you know the ideals that we're you know it is it is a racism thing, and, and people just still continue to not get that. They just did a special edition of that, I guess. It had extra pages and stuff. I'm like, well, people still aren't going to get it. It's 2020 now. Yeah, it's it's so I don't want to get too far on this topic, but we've gone so far backwards in the last four years. <laughs> we've gone damn near. We we are like in the forties right now, is how I feel. Damn near the the nineteen twenties is where we're at. Is how I feel at times, you know. At times, there's other times where you realize, okay, look, we're still way, way, way ahead of. When you think about, you know, when we got our civil rights as opposed to when we were, at least, slavery was abolished, to when we got... Jim Crow. I'm saying, you, you, I'm that. saying, it's, it's watching Lovecraft was like one of those things, and or even when we were watching The Watchmen, I've, I've gotten more black history in the <laughs> last know, two years than I did in all of all going school. to school. <laughs> So somebody at HBO is, is teaching people. Teaching, teaching people some stuff. I'm like, wait, <clears throat> what? Green Book? Oh, that's what that was about. <laughs> that was just another driving Miss Daisy movie. <laughs> but I, I digress. I digress. I don't want to get you know, too much. Something else uh, to, to bring it back to track. Something that we used to have here that was one of the first, you know, major big, you know, it was a dedicated comic shops, direct market, you know, a comic shop, that's what you went there for, that's what they sold, you know, it wasn't the first one in the U.S., but it was the second or third, and uh, Comic Kingdom in Detroit, and they had, you know, it was like maybe five, six blocks from the house, so we were there, you know, every weekend at least, and and that was where I learned about the, the value of things, because that guy, he was, he wasn't even old yet, he was a bitter old man when he was 25, you know, the owner of the store. Uh, he was still bitter when he went out of business in like 2006, but uh, I, I kept going and, and you know get the same experience every time. You know he had everything, and he also had a, a hobby shop attached, so it was full of D and D and Conan stuff and models and all that kind of stuff. 
but you know <clears throat> even in say like in 86 i went there in the summer you know like uh oh cool he's got everything he's got the wolverine miniseries one through four the original the good one Oh, yeah. You know, like, That's okay, fun. you know, how much is this? And he's like, well, you know, and he starts giving you the bitter old man stuff. He's like, look, man, you've known me since I was like three or four. Okay, you know, he sold it to me for like 20 bucks for the four pack. You could make deals with the guy, but, uh, and he could get you anything. Like, oh, I want this. Oh, well, let me make a call, you know. He was that kind of guy. And, mm-hmm. and that was when I, when I moved away from that and noticed that those weren't everywhere, it was, it was not, a, not a pleasant moment. You know, and then we found, I moved to Fairfield and found Comics and Comics, which was like one-third the size, but was still just about as cool. So, you know, you could, the, you, the shops made a big difference. You could sometimes make deals, but not usually. They were selling stuff usually at the value that it was on that store. Whenever, well, I, made, there whenever was I made a deal employees, with them. I ain't going to say no names <laughs> yeah. on the air, but there were some hey. people that when you go get your comic books, they were there go, here you go. And I'm like, how, how much is it? He goes, no, man. Here you go. <laughs> and I was like, I had a couple. That's of those. always good. I had a, a couple where I wanted something that was on the back wall there that, that was a, a pricier tag, and I'd be like, man, you know, I, I don't have uh, twelve bucks or something back then. Like, well, you know, I'll sell it to you for seven bucks and a cheeseburger from Carl's Jr. <laughs> you know, all right, I'll yeah. be back in ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not back gonna say again cents. any names, nor am I gonna say this actually happened. But there allegedly was a time when I worked at the movie theater and uh, movie passes was as good as cash. <laughs> so good. <laughs> as good as cash. Cleaning out my entire comic book saver for six, six tickets. <laughs> I you that meant better. nothing to me. I got a pamphlet of it like this. We were encouraged to pass them out so we can get people to come in. Because like I said before, box office wasn't what drove the the, the concessions. It was concessions. So they didn't even mind if us as, uh, my my title there was chief of staff. So they didn't even mind me being a chief of staff and giving me a booklet, because they would assign the booklets, they weren't stupid. They would assign the booklets so they would have a range of numbers on it. And they would know when those tickets came back from the numbers, who passed them out? You know? Now, if they really want to notice, it's like, hey, man, the same few people keep coming in. We notice this guy from the comic book shop. He keeps coming in. This guy who from the barbershop. But he's going to the concessions. <laughs> but they're going to concessions because they had families, and they're bringing them in, and they got three, four kids. And, you know, at any time in life, when you have four kids in your family, that's a big family, you know? And everybody wants snacks. You know? Yeah, they do. I, I remember one of the funny, I, silliest things. Uh, I was at a convention. This was this had to be one of the Oakland conventions. Uh, wonder, wonder, it was wonder a God. huge room full of comics, and I saw Tomb of Dracula number one. It was out of my price range. I said, "Can't you make a deal?" I said, "Dude, I'm making a deal. It's the last day. I'm not going to get any lower." I said, well, "Would you trade for something?" He's like, "You know what?" He said, "I'm looking for Iron Man number one. You find that, and I'll give you the Tomb of Dracula." Okay, went around the whole room, finally found Iron Man number one for like only two thirds of the price of the Tomb of Dracula. He says, I'll take that, rip the tag off, come back. Here's your Iron Man number one, traded for Tomb of Dracula. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty good hustle right there. Yeah. Was well it wasn't. It's amazing because when you said the cheeseburger thing, it said they're too lazy to get up and look themselves. <laughs> All you had to do was yeah. walk the room and you found <laughs> Iron Man number one. It's not that hard of a book to get. Yeah, but you know what? It was better as he had you do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we both got what we wanted. Yeah. That's, well, that's what I think they used to do at CNC. It was like, well, you know, I will give you a discount equivalent to one hour of my pay if you go run these menial tasks around the mall for me for an hour. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And we were young kids and we yeah. were happy to do it. Because yeah. when I was, my, 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 I guess it was said my really from 12 to about 16, maybe 15. That was my heavy buying comics, whatever I had to do to get the money to buying, go get comics, trading. trading for comics. That was my, those were the years where I was really, really, really invested. Um, after 16, I would say 
because it's funny because now I had my own money. I was working. So I had my own money. So then you start, your priorities start to shift a little bit. Sure. Uh, first of all, gas in the car was very important. And my car was usually broke down more than it was on the road. <laughs> so I always wanted to make sure I had money for gas. One gallon of gas. One at least. Of gas. And then I would still, but, but I always had a comic book saver. And it would always, it would get thick. And then I would get that call like, hey, uh, <laughs> Mr. Gaddy, are you going to come in? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll come in. This, I'll come and get a few books. I'll cut it in half. Let, let, yeah, let, me, put something let on me, it. me put something on it. Let me put something on it. Don't, don't, don't put it back on the shelves. Well, you, you, you remember, I was a DC guy. I remember when Action Comics switched to Action Comics Weekly. Yeah. What he told me. Oh, man. <laughs> a few weeks went by. Actually, a few months went by. Like, you need to come back and get your comics there. All right, damn. What is it? Ten bucks worth in there? <laughs> what the hell are all these comics? <laughs> Action Comics Weekly was a double size issue. It was. I said, yeah. Uh, sorry, but you can't put those Action Comics Weeklies back. <laughs> I'm not collecting Action Comics anymore. Frank, at your most, how big was your saver? Oh, I don't know. I had uh, I had every Marvel book and a bunch of independent books on there, and probably a couple DCs. So maybe maybe thirty five titles, something like that. And, uh, and then I didn't pick it up all summer, you know. So I'd come back after like two and a half months, basically three po- three pulls, and it'd be like, you know, uh, it would not okay. fit in like two or three CNC bags. You needed so, like that big right, ass bag. We all have very, yeah. we all have very similar stories. Has anyone ever had? Their actual comic book saver canceled or oh, yeah. everything put back. Like, I had my yeah. comics come several times. Really? Yeah, I come back. I'm just gonna put like two books up. <laughs> and then he's like, "You said that last time." I know, but I just, I just, 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 just okay. Batman, <laughs> Detective, and actually comics, <laughs> Adventures, Superman, Fantastic Four. Uh, and I was li- just going through all the artists I had out because at that time Byrne was doing Superman. Oh, yeah. He had just done that Fantastic Four run. I love the Fantastic Four. You know what the thing is? That the number one character that, who knocked Superman off the mountain, you all know, is Spider Man. I was never a huge Spider Man fan. Never. I had, a, I had enough fandom for the three of us. Yeah. yeah right. I mean, I enjoyed the, the books that I got, but. I didn't really follow them. Uh, again, not to be a broken record, but I would buy any X title before I bought anything else. It's, it's, but when you crossed over into another book, I would have to get that book. Well, unless, <laughs> unless they were doing something special like the Mutant Massacre, I, I didn't buy the X-Men. I wanted the burn issues. They were all too expensive. I had a few of them, and me and Aaron would trade them back and forth. We were all desperate to have a collection of John Byrne X-Men. Yeah, well, when he left, I, I, I had no interest in the X Men. When we started all having similar tastes, because the trading part used to be great until me, Tommy, and Robbie were all was buying the same book. Yeah, and then it was like together. we're all as like this is all. It. And then at one point in time, Tom and Ralph must have had a meeting and they decided that you know what, Kurt's still buying the books. Let him buy them, and then we'll just read his books. <laughs> 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 Because I noticed bring I was to the like, house and put them on the coffee table anyway. So I mean, read it. And, and Ralph on our walks to school he used to fill me in on what was going on with Spider-Man anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he was always telling me, that, "Oh, this issue when Spider-Man came out, this happened, that happened." I don't need to read it now. I already know what's going on with him. Yeah, See, I always I liked Spider-Man to, as yeah. a kid, like cause the, from the cartoon and all that stuff and toys and whatever. But then uh, when I when I met Ralph, I was basically buying just GI Joe and Transformers at that point, you know, the, the, the licensed stuff. And then he's like, "Oh no, here, take this." And he gave me like your power packs. Like, Here's a stack of like 50 Spider-Man comics. Take these and read them. You know. And then that was from that point. It was I'm buying all these Spider-Man books. You know? <laughs> which was like four titles a month that because I had was Amazing, Spectacular, Web, and Marvel yeah, Tales, was which was the old book. Oh, well, um, is that it? You know what? I when I got into Spider Man, finally got into Spider Man, is when uh, Todd McFarlane did that run on Spider Man. Mm-hmm. I, I read those Todd McFarlane books, and then when he stopped, I stopped. Yeah. Well, I think who was it that took over? But, but, was it Eric Larson? Yeah. Uh, did he take Larson over? Larson did. Yeah. Yeah, I did read some of the Larson books on Spider Man after he after uh Did you read any of the eighty series Silver Surfer? 
No, I because I know you did because you said he's so a garbage character, <laughs> and the movies you love so much are based on his comics. And I will go again and say, and with the exclusion of him, that's why they were no. great. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a fan of because Silver Surfer, this man. guy. First of all, I hate naked heroes. When we were kids, <laughs> Ralph used to draw all his heroes in skin tight bodysuits. I'm like, where there's no belt, there's no pants, no shirt. It's just a head, a body, and a Ken doll spot. And Robbie's like, yeah, he's in a skin tight bodysuit. Everybody, every character you draw what a design is in a skin. It. And so then I'm looking at Silver Surfer and I'm like, he's just naked. You never gave him a chance though. So. I gave him a chance. Yeah. When I looked at Well, it, when, when you started, watched the terrible movie they made, but well, first of all, they didn't make the movies until I was like a grown yeah. man when I saw Fantastic Four, Age of Silver Surfer. Trash. <laughs> it was trash. It was a trash movie. It's, uh, Even in the cartoons, he's so like, oh, just like, so melancholy. <laughs> He's a bit sad. Yeah, his planet was destroyed. All right, he's get over it. We know. He's trapped on Earth, and get he doesn't even like Earth. Earth. And he doesn't even like it, so leave it. Love it or leave it. Leave. Love it or leave it. Oh, anyway, uh, so going back to the Silver Surfer, um, there was no incarnation of the Silver Surfer either in the books, on TV, or in the movies that made me like him as a character. Ron Lim's drawings of the Silver Surfer were Nice. And I have one right up there on my yeah, wall. I know. But Thanos is also in that. <laughs> and I like Thanos. <laughs> well, yeah, he's that was. Yeah, he's a great character. That was a the whole Infinity War was just this great story that unfolded after years of Silver Surfer comics. I mean, it just it was just like this epic storyline that just kept going. And just when he thought he had this he had Thanos under control, or he had the the, the uh, gems under control. The storyline just kept going. And what was unfortunate was when Infinity War did come out, it sold out before I could buy the damn thing. You know, so <laughs> funny. See, I, I've got the Silver Surfer's paper. whole thing right. is he was the herald of Galactus, right? No, my whole job that's is to tell when you he got fired after his first appearance. Is like I just come through. It's not a herald you of know, Galactus. Hey, Galactus is coming. He's gonna eat your planet. Ain't nothing you can do about it. So you might as well Ralph, grab who's, your who's and grab the herald who replaced Silver Surfer? Uh, Firestorm. Nova. Oh, Nova. Name's Nova. She looks. He's a real oh. awful Firestorm. Oh, oh Nova. Nova. Yeah, I know which which Nova you're talking about. Nova. Yeah. That's right. He's not a Herald of Galactus. He was in like Fantastic Four forty seven, and, and then he got fired, and he got he got uh, 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 ruined on Earth. So he can't even do the job. No, he can't do the job. He's trash. He <laughs> felt guilty. You got one job. Planet. You can't even do Tell that. Tell the whole planet they're all gonna die. Yeah. That's it. How hard is that? Ready for you do it, Galactus consumption. Yeah, yeah, but he could be uh, that big of a bitch. Say he just survived the thing that killed Galactus, and you know, so Civil Surfer is alive, and his boss is dead. So he must not have been, you know, that weak, huh? <laughs> no, uh, he I did know. in the when they did Very the series tough. in the eighties. He finally made peace with Galactus. I think and I was, was allowed to leave, and we found out Galactus went and ate his world anyway. I I remember being, I want to say maybe eleven or twelve years old. And I was doing my own comics at this time. And there was a kid in the neighborhood who liked Silver Surfer. And I hated the Silver Surfer. <laughs> Even at that point, I hated him. But he wanted a character, because I was drawing every kid in the in the neighborhood as a superhero. And uh, he, he watched the show, too. So uh, Shorty Tim, uh, said this no, Shorty, Shorty Tim, Tim. Uh, Tim Math, Tim, this, is, this goes out to you. I made him a character called him the Light Surfer. And he had a surfboard and it flew and he had the whole thing, but you know what he had? Clothes. I put him <laughs> in an outfit. <laughs> he had the mask, but he had an outfit Clothes on. Clothes equal friction. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, goes. surf naked is how you but get he, it. No, if you look, he had like the same visible panty line that they always put on all the naked he superheroes. Did. He was wearing some yeah. trunks and then covered in silver. Come on. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know where I learned about a lot of these characters? This is the thing we kind of forget about, a lost distant memory, but uh, a lot of those Marvel characters like Doctor Strange, Silver Surfer, Daredevil, like the, the, the not the A-listers, but all the surrounding characters, 
it was the uh, the Seven Eleven Slurpee cups, man. Like you'd get that, and they had the, every Marvel character possible. And they're like, "Oh, I got a who is this?" And, well, now I got to read about him. Well, Daredevil. You know, it looks kind of evil. I'm gonna check it out. And stuff like that. I remember turning on a Daredevil. I can't remember the names. It was Dave and somebody? Sam, brothers. Samson. Samson. Oh, Dave wow. Samson. Yeah. He's the one who introduced the Frank Miller Jump. Daredevils to me. I showed them to you guys. You guys went nuts. So crazy. Yeah. It was I, so I, good. The so Punisher good. issues. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Man. All right. You know what? We can. All right. You're about to well, take us down the right. rabbit hole. <laughs> Last question. <laughs> does the thing have a rock penis or does he have a real penis behind rocks or does he just have a real penis behind you his trunks? You need to ask <laughs> Alicia. <laughs> Does it get hit by a rock? <laughs> when the rocks fly in, and wouldn't that hurt? Can you smell what the Ooh, rock yeah. is cooking? <laughs> oh. And with that, <laughs> this has been Ooh, another yeah. fine episode. <laughs> leave on a high note. Wouldn't that look weird, though? An old rock and then a regular penis? <laughs> well, it looked like a bad He'd wind up crushing, crushing his own balls world. when he walked. Yeah. I mean, that would, that would be... That, he would not be able to stand up if he had that. Again, right. Or maybe he had his rock balls, girlfriend. but just, just the oh, shaft wait, was not right. <laughs> real shaft rock balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those rocks come flying in hard, man. <laughs> oh, that's only I mean, when he does the thing ring. Growing, growing, that that now we're talking to our audience. Oh, the thing ring. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thing ring, do your thing. Uh, well, off the way. <laughs> Since we're talking about superhero penises, pandemonium. Well, I mean, how do you, how else do you end the show without talking about superhero genitalia? I mean, what did you want to end? Well, it with? Uh, buy a copy of Batman Damn from one and donate it to Ralphie D. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Batman's penis in my years already. <laughs> Does it have a cowl? <laughs> <laughs> wow! I'm not gonna laugh at that joke. <laughs> Condom does. There you go. Yes, yes, okay. Two fifty two. All right, dudes.